Thank you for clicking on the video. As you can see here, another mega church pastor is saying Jesus Christ is a liar. And I'm not going to go into any detail in regards to the article. If you want to read the article, you, of course, can click on the, the source right here. Uh, but uh, just to summarize it, she's more or less saying that Jesus is not the only way to get to heaven. And so I have to ask, where does our Heavenly Father reside? In heaven, right? And as Christians, we all want to go to heaven to be with him. And knowing this, we that read and believe the Bible recall how Jesus stated clearly in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Therefore, this woman who claims to be a pastor, even though the Bible says the only way to be a pastor is to be the husband of one wife, and worse yet, like most pastors the world over, she blasphemes by using the title reverend, even though when speaking of the Lord, it clearly states in Psalm 111 verse 9, holy and reverend is his name. This woman is openly mocking the Lord in many different ways by simply standing as pastor before the people. And that is the main reason she stands there. But all that aside, which is bad enough, but clearly par for the course when it comes to Rome's ecumenical charge in all the churches, this so-called pastor actually denies scripture to declare Jesus to be a liar. And she does this in the same company as the last three popes of Rome, at least one cardinal that I can recall, Billy Graham, Robert Schuller, John Hagee, I, I lost count of how many Catholic priests have said it, and many other so-called men and women of God not too far outside the walls of Rome that have declared in unison that Jesus lied when he said he is the only way to salvation. But there is a method to their madness. As I hinted at a moment ago, it's called the Ecumenical Charge of Rome. The Vatican II Council put this forth in the 1960s. This is why all the churches have joined with Rome in embracing everything from homosexual marriage to Islam as being sanctioned by the Christian God that they openly hate with a passion. But let me ask you a simple question here. How will the dying God of this world convince mankind that a church prophetically realized as the home of Antichrist, which has been proven thousands of times over to be filled to the rafters with evil fruit, how will he be able to make people think that this long prophesied mother of harlots is the one true Christian church on earth? How will this enemy get the people of this world to ignore the facts so plainly laid out in prophecy as well as in doctrine? Well, the answer is quite easy. All he has to do is get them to stop reading their Bibles. And for those that refuse to stop, he gives them edited Bibles with thousands of verses missing. This is why we not only have ungodly men and women standing as pastors in megachurches, we have them blaspheming, teaching their flock to break God's law each and every week on the Roman Sabbath, as well as declaring Jesus Christ is not the only way to get to heaven. If the people in those pews were reading their Bibles, this could never be preached on any pulpit. Satan knows if the Christian church doesn't cave in and declare Jesus isn't the only way to salvation, then he's not going to be able to get the Muslims, the Hindus, the Jews, or even the atheists to join in his long prophesied one world church headed up by his man of sin in Rome. And as prophesied, all the world is in fact wandering after the beast in Rome because our God, the one who penned the prophecies thousands of years ago, saw the end from the beginning perfectly and put those historic events in his book long before they occurred, so his obedient bride will be prepared and ready to stand undefiled before her husband on that great and dreadful day. Thank you for watching. God bless.